playing Demon Hunter DK Restitute. So Fort Fun actually added Cheerios here in uh, into their roster, and this is his debut. Yep, Cheerios, a very excellent Demon Hunter in the North American scene. Some interesting composition from the move once again. This is their main. This is what we normally see from them. The Assassination Rogue, Shadow Priest, Resto Shaman. Hasn't necessarily been the best. I think Absurge could potentially struggle on mana in this matchup, especially with Cheerios consistently stunning him using that mana rift. Watch out for a purple circle under Absurge that's just going to be burning some of his mana as well as his health. And if Cheerios can consistently land that, I think that will give For Fun the edge in this matchup. Absurge has been facing mana rift all the way back against Method Orange when Trill and Mez were running double mana rift. So Absurge has healed with zero mana for years at this point, and he's definitely experienced at it. While it is an advantage for For Fun, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough on its own. They are going to need to set up good cross crowd control to execute a kill. We currently see Peekaboo taking control of Whoopi, trying to sap a trinket, but not finding that opportunity. Whoopi just sitting through the crowd control comfortably, allowing Rosita Jones to trade his personal defensive cooldowns instead. No panic attack on the side of For Fun. They respond to that blind completely appropriately. Yeah, and this is a strategy we've seen from the move in the past. Peekaboo runs over, he gets the blind on Whoopi, and then kind of just sits there and babysits him a little bit. And normally the Shadow Priest can rot down the other two DPS, and that gives the move a little bit of pressure. But against classes like the Demon Hunter, like the Death Knight, they have so much self-healing that the Shadow Priest rot pressure isn't going to be that significant. Right now, the move making a nice swap over onto Whoopi. We saw him pick up the Resto Druid, I believe it was last week. Um, a lot of these healers have opted to pick up that Resto Druid as it is so strong, but I think for the move, it's going to be interesting to see if they continually test Whoopi to make sure he's up for the challenge. Yeah, it's really up to Peekaboo. He's the only one that can create pressure for the team. Shadow Priest is basically countered by the composition that For Fun has selected with all of their powerful self-healing mechanics and Leech and Death Strike with the Heal Over Time Effects and Restoration Druid. Perfect time shackle there on the Raise Abomination by Whiskey. Unfortunately, breaking a little bit early. I believe his Void Form activation broke it, but getting control of that Abomination as it's currently shackled in that cage, preventing its damage is very important. That's a powerful cooldown that Unholy Death Knights bring to the fight, and obviously as a Shadow Priest, you don't move very fast, so trying to run away from it is not going to work. Instead, using Shackle is your best option. Peekaboo has consistently been going after Whoopi in these swaps, trying to create some opportunity for his team, but slowly and surely, Cheerios is creating that mana advantage through Mana Rift, and it's almost an inevitability at this point for Absurds to fundamentally just run out of mana. Rosita Jones bursting down WizK, trying to create some pressure for the team. WizK using that Shackle very effectively during burst moments to control the Unholy Death Knight's army of the dead as much as possible to avoid as much damage as he can but it's just so difficult so they do finally catch whoopi out of bear form in a kidney shot good move on their part but don't have enough damage to take him down yeah rosita jones with good backup uses the death grip to move peekaboo out of position chains of ice and and it's really difficult for Peekaboo to actually reconnect to his target. Now full blind on Whoopi. Whoopi can't trinket out of this because he has no bark skin, and that would make him very vulnerable to another setup. So he's going to be opting to sit that. Peekaboo punishes with the Vanish, with the follow-up Sap. Now Rosita Jones could be taking a little bit of pressure, but he still has his Icebound Fortitude as well as his anti-magic zone. I think Rosita Jones should be sitting pretty during that setup, and Whoopi was able to comfortably sit through the blind Sap. Now Barkskin's rotating back up. He still has his trinket. And I think for the move, the main pressure point is once again going to be Whoopi, but he seems to be dealing with these situations quite well. Yeah, before dampening, it is going to be difficult for either side to really make a significant dent into the opposing team. The advantage, though, for Cheerios is that Mana Rift can at least gain them a mana lead, although they just let Absturge drink and reset his mana pool, so they've lost that advantage. Whoopi is now realizing that and trying to find one himself to even out that playing field as we move closer to dampening. Not able to even out completely. Another well-timed shackle on that Abomination. Good defense on Wizk's part, even though it's very difficult to generate pressure against these classes in the current meta. He's definitely doing his best to slow down the damage for Absurge to recover, while Pika who does his best to work around the defense and try and create openings for the team. It's going to really rely on Peekaboo to carry the move in game number one against For Fun. I don't know how many times we've seen them face these compositions that are just so durable. It looks so hopeless the entire time. We get into 50% dampening. They have no mana, no health left on all three members, and it's Peekaboo that navigates through that and finds a kill. Definitely look to see if he can do it here in game one. Yeah, the move's trying to overcome all odds in this matchup. Rosita Jones getting a little bit low. Full kidney shot now on Whoopi. The move once again finding some pressure. Wizk throws in his Gladiator's Maledict. 
to help Peekaboo out in the setup, as well as a nice silence. Whoopi gets behind the pillar. Second Maledict does get traded out by Peekaboo. Whoopi dispels it and ultimately is fine. But he actually had to trade out a decent amount of mana, Barskin and Iron Bark during that setup. Wiz K now under fire. Absurge having to play catch up, throwing out some healing waves as we've moved into dampening. Things are going to get more difficult for both of these healers. I think Absurge's mana is going to start getting taxed quite a bit. And even pressure for the move could start building up now that Rosita Jones and Cheerio's self healing is going to be a little bit, little bit more limited. Uh, I think Whoopi's going to have a much more difficult job. They got through Whoopi's Gladiator's Medallion. This could be an opportunity for the move. Peekaboo creates an opening to build some momentum, but Wizke is getting pushed back. He tried to overextend and chase down Whoopi, and he's really feeling the pain of that overextension. Ray's Abomination casted and shackled instantly. Good reaction time on Wizke's part. That cooldown is effectively negated as a result of his good play. Tyrio's hexed. Whoopi unable to dispel. Good crowd control here by the move as they tried to take down Whoopi, but Death Grip from Rosita peels Peekaboo away, allowing Whoopi a lot of time to breathe. Wizke now switching targets to Rosita, trying to catch him off guard, and this is what the move are known for. They will mix up their strategies, mid-game adaptations, and create openings with unexpected pressure and unexpected targets, which is what allows them to continue to make it to these top eights, even though their compositions are not the best. Yep, full kidney shot now on Whoopi. Good damage here from Peekaboo. Commits the Vendetta as well. Whoopi has to as respond with the bark skin. He needs to stay out of line of sight of Wiz K. Peekaboo gets caught into the bash. Wiz K able to fully load him up with damage over time effects. The Vampiric Embrace, or sorry, the VT as well. Vampiric Touch and the Shadow Word Pain are going to be rotting down all three members right now as Wiz K has been able to free cast in void form, putting out decent amounts of pressure. But still, for fun, has been able to handle it quite easily. Whoopi now in a kidney shot. This looks like a dangerous situation for him, but Cheerio still has the darkness, and I think it's likely it gets dropped out. Now that they've worked through that, Whoopi could be in a lot of trouble very shortly. Yeah, Whoopi cannot afford to be caught out of bear form as frequently as he is in this matchup. I do think that this is a fairly one-sided fight for their composition, but little errors are starting to pile up, and the mistakes that have been made will eventually cost them the game if it continues to happen. Peekaboo capitalizing on every single mistake immediately. Whoopi, well-timed bear form, avoids a lot of damage in this kidney shot, but this is what Peekaboo does. If, if Whoopi's in bear form, he makes an adaptation, switches targets, builds pressure on Rosita. Then Whoopi has to leave bear form to heal Rosita. Peekaboo then can switch back to him and get more pressure onto two targets. And it's definitely top tier play on his part. Good crowd control by the move here as they drop a smoke bomb and look for a kill on Rosita Jones. Not enough damage to take him out here at 17% dampening. That death strike still quite potent. Peekaboo does continue the chain of crowd control, however, and looks for more momentum. Lightning bolts from Absurge. That's another thing I really enjoy about the move is that Absurge is not hesitant when he needs to add just a tad bit of lightning to the fight he can push the other team over the edge as a result with that high level of awareness on that healer roll to do damage when he can yeah and this pressure from the move has really taxed Whoopi's mana kidney shot now on Rosita Jones he doesn't have a single defensive cooldown left Whoopi might have to use the iron bark gets silenced up gets reverse magic by Cheerios good timing quick reaction by Cheerios to help out his teammate now Peekaboo with only evasion left is increasingly vulnerable of a target Absurge actually managed to sneak away and completely reset his mana oh. but Peekaboo might get punished if they can just take him down right here right now Faint's gonna be traded out void shift as well from Wiz K was used now both members from the move are low Absurge has to play catch up he has the ascendance want to activate that and if he can free cast some heals here I think the move is going to be in a very healthy spot the so Wizk used void shift when he was also low health so peekaboo didn't gain any benefit of that void shift effectively the cooldown was wasted and they're not going to see another one for the rest of the fight that mistake might cost the move the match will they be able to stay alive they've got an opening here they've got vendetta whoopi has no trinket if they can catch him out of bear form but it looks like they're reluctant to make that swap just yet a little bit hesitant, chasing down Rosita. Now pressuring Cheerios in dampening that self-healing of the Death Knight gets weaker so that he may be a vulnerability. Peekaboo looks to exploit, moves in behind the pillar. Absturge moves in as well, crushing him with the Maledict, trying to add in just a little bit of extra damage and healing absorption. They've managed to tap Whoopi on mana if the move can stabilize, but they've made mistakes in terms of defensive cooldown management. Preemptive feint by Peekaboo reduces a lot of damage during that bash. Just enough for him to com comfortably sit through it. Good mind controls on Rosita while Absurd is crowd controlled. Wizk's defense has been solid. Now he just needs a good initiation and a good push of Peekaboo's Vendetta to finally put the team of four fun down. 
They've got a kidney shot on Rosita. They go for the Vendetta. They're looking for the kill here, and now they silence the deny anti-magic shield. Perfect timing by WizK. Nice mid-game adaptation once again, using that crowd control to deny the defense of the Death Knight rather than crowd controlling the healer. Now they manage to pull Whoopi's Gladiator's Medallion. They manage to pull Darkness, anti-magic zone, every single cooldown from four fun, blown in one attack. The move are on point. Yeah, they are on fire in this matchup. Now the four fun doesn't really have much left. Vampiric Embrace gets activated by WizK. They're looking to stay offensive in this matchup. Rosita Jones still low. Whoopi almost completely tapped on mana in this situation. Absurge looking to play a little bit more offensive. There is a full silence on a Whoopi. Rosita Jones desperately trying to keep himself alive. That was a Medetta from Peekaboo, which pulled out so many of those defensive cooldowns. Whoopi still just trying to dispel the Vampiric Touch as well as the Shadowed Pain as often as possible. Now with the full bash on Peekaboo, he's a little bit vulnerable, but still has many defensives he can rotate through. Kidney shot now on Whoopi. The move all over the place. Dancing circles on for fun. Yep, the move doing their best here, even though at a disadvantage in this current meta, they are asserting dominance in game number one. Peekaboo is the only vulnerability at the moment, but he has cooldowns to trade. I'm surprised to not just see him do it. He's going to evasion, deny the death strike, and take the kill. Peekaboo is ready to perform here in game one. Cheerios in the squad going to go down after this one because the gates are already open on hook point. The move versus for fun. Yeah, I think Absurge on the Restoration Shaman is going to struggle with heavy single target healing. So if Omnivore, Whoopi, and Rosita Jones can connect on WizK and Absurge just has to bomb heals on him over and over and over with these healing waves, I think he will go out of mana relatively quickly. And I think the pressure for fun will be high. But so far, the move getting aggressive early on on to Omnivore. We know Zico, he didn't really like the Warrior just because it doesn't have as much self-healing. But... I personally think Whoopi will be able to keep him up until at least a little bit later on in the game, and I think until Dampening for Fun have a clear advantage. Yep, definitely will be the case with Whoopi locked down and crowd control during that wave. The crane omnivore is exposed, and as Zico pointed out in the pre-match, he does not have any self-healing mechanics, so any points of damage you get on an arms warrior are going to stick for the entire fight until your healer can then pick the target up, and they've already fallen heavily behind on defensive cooldowns just to stabilize omnivore throughout that initial assault, and this is what we credit the move for doing is if they see any signs of weakness, they immediately pounce on that weak link and capitalize on it, closing matches out rapidly as a result. Yep, WizK doing a lot of burst. Double Maledic going out on Omnivore. Whoopi's burned through every single one of his defensive cooldowns. He has no life cocoon. He already used his revival, gets shadow step kicked by Peekaboo. Way of the Crane shortly available. Whoopi's going to have to get high value out of this Way of the Crane if he wants to keep his team alive. Omnivore runs away, gets out of line of sight. Now a kidney shot committed on Whoopi, forced to trink it out. And the move is just owning for fun, forcing them so defensive in this matchup, burning through every single one of their defensive cooldowns. Silence now on Whoopi. Omnivore still low. Whoopi thankfully has the life cocoon right before the fear. It's nicely done. Omnivore should survive because of that. But even still, now fully hexed by Absturge. You can tell that the move know how to set up for kills and going after a target without that self-sustainability is a huge liability for for fun. Peekaboo has landed shadow step kick after shadow step kick. Whoopi finally able to connect with that wave of the crane three members of four fun have finally pressured the move back and banked the dispersion from WizK's defensive arsenal now switching their attention to peekaboo trying to catch him off guard no evasion for 13 seconds absturge starting to stabilize the team finally some counter pressure for for fun but they are going to be exposed to this next vendetta shortly WizK tries to set up some crowd control silencing whoopee Absurge moves across the map to try and get a Hex. They are making sure that they keep Whoopi on the move so he cannot stand still and cast Soothing Mist. Omnivore sees that threat and landed a double Intimidating Shout, buying time for him to get restabilized by Whoopi. But there's already a significant mana lead in favor of the move, a significant momentum lead as well. For fun need a lot of damage, and they need it now. Yeah, they absolutely do. There's no question about it. The move, though, under a little bit of pressure, Peekaboo is getting a little low, and you can see Whoopi, he's actually running relentless, so he is going to be susceptible to those blind zaps coming in from Peekaboo. Vendetta gets pulled out by Peekaboo. Let's see if there's any follow-up crowd control onto Whoopi. Omnivore getting low, anti-magic zone forced to be traded out, as well as that life cocoon. For fun, once again, burning through a lot of their defensives, but they need to buy Omnivore some time. He's got 28 seconds left on that die by the sword. That's the only cooldown he really has to keep himself alive. Full blind on Whoopi. Can they take Omnivore down? Peekaboo seems to be the one that's forced to play defensive and Nice war banner coming in from Omnivore, denying that blind sap. All these crowd controls on Whoopi will be less in duration as the war banner does prevent a lot of that crowd control. Way of the Crane gets activated by Whoopi, trying to keep Omnivore alive, still getting denied on some of that healing. Whiskey running away, Peekaboo trying to kite. 
Whoopi finally getting on target, able to top off his team. For Fun do stabilize, and the move could be in a little bit of trouble. Yep, For Fun looking to make a push off the back of all the crowd control that was dished out towards them. This is where they would like to force a dispersion. Earthen Wall Totem is likely all they're going to get, though. Shackle on that abomination. Whiskey's defense still looking solid here in game number two. Peekaboo looks to set up a swap, trying to catch Whoopi off guard. Mix it up again, that mid-game adaptation on the move's part. But now Whiskey has been left alone for a bit, and he's feeling a bit of the brunt from the team of four fun. Trades out dispersion while Absurge is crowd controlled. Peekaboo's solo mission has managed to at least pull Life Cocoon, but it's cost his team defensive cooldowns as well. Risks must be taken to find victory for the move in the tournament today as they battle against the meta. Yeah, Whoopi getting low. Peekaboo all over him at this point, trying to force out Revival or potentially that way of the crane if he can, but Whoopi doesn't have much mana left. Neither Ooh. does Absurge, and I think it's unlikely at this point we're going to see any of these healers drink. That was a really nice ring of peace there by Whoopi. You can actually use it to pin your healer against the wall, and then you can actually get off any casted spells. So high-level Mistweaver play there from Whoopi. Absurge manages to top off his team. Vampiric Embrace gets thrown out by WizK as well. Wants to remain aggressive, help out his healer with a little bit of extra healing. Omnivore on 50% health. Smoke Bomb gets dropped out by Peekaboo. He still has a Vendetta. If they can pull out where the Crane or the Life Cocoon pre-Vendetta, that's a clear win condition for the move moving forward. I mean, at this point, they're in dire straits. They interrupt Absurge. This Hex, though, if Whoopi gets Hexed, it's going to be devastating. He's trying to line a sight, squeak in, get a rising sun kick, squeak around the corner of the wall. Good defensive rotations by Whoopi. Effective use of hook point to avoid crowd control and at least get some damage on that way of the crane. Desperately trying to force the last line of defense, that void shift of Wiz K. But Earthen Wall Totem seems to be enough. Shackle and Dead needs to be cast and it gets interrupted. Now that Abomination will be allowed to go to town. How much punishment can Wiz K take here in game number two? Dispersion available in one more second. Peekaboo buys time to Omnivore. get there. Secures crowd control into two members. Omnivore in a three on two. Rosita saves him with anti-magic zone. He starts to stabilize. Now WizK on the back foot, but Whoopi's still silenced. Stormbolt by Omnivore. Whoopi has got that aura mastery rolling, trying to connect a couple of big heals to get Omnivore back into the fight. It's still anyone's fight at this point. Yeah, Omnivore still low. If WizK can purge off a lot of these heals coming in from Whoopi, Omnivore could still be in a lot of trouble. Way of the crane almost up for Whoopi. If he can use that, he might be able to top off his team. Napster is almost completely out of mana. WizK, the only thing he has left is that Void Shift getting lower and lower. Omnivore, Rosita Jones looking to close out the game. WizK gets interrupted. Void Shift forced out, but they're just going to be all over WizK. And still a lot of pressure. Absurge low, low on mana, but I think it's unlikely Omnivore actually swaps to him. He's just throwing him into an intimidating shout. WizK on 50% health. For fun rotting down. Omnivore very vulnerable. Whoopi doesn't have the mana to activate Way of the Crane just yet. He's trying to hold on a little bit longer, keeping Omnivore alive. The move, though, is the one that's in trouble. I mean, they don't have anything to work with here. They've got no mana, really nothing left defensively. Vampiric Embrace and Dampening is not that effective of healing your team. Whoopi's trying to sit down for drinks. That's distracting Peekaboo. He has to keep his attention there, which means he can't support WizK. He's just got a warrior and a death knight chopping him up in midfield. Absurd is never going to get a drink on hook point. For fun have set themselves up for victory here on game number two. Can the move pull off a miracle? They've got an opportunity in about 30 seconds, but I don't think they've got 30 seconds left in this match to stay in it. Peekaboo tries to carry it. Can he do it by himself single-handedly? Take down No Whoopi. way! They do manage to back up the crowd control. Peekaboo gets peeled away by Omnivore. Whoopi portals in a line of sight, but Absurge is there to deny the heal for a couple of extra seconds. Peekaboo needs to make his way back down towards Whoopi, but he just can't. Now Maledicts are flying in towards WizK. Dispersion has to be traded, but all the healing from it is being absorbed. The Abomination is unshackled and going at WizK. He's looking to deny it, manages to get it. Mind controls defensively to try and stay in the fight to buy time for that Spirit Link totem. It's five seconds away. They just need to stall three more seconds. Absurge now has that Spirit Link totem. Whoopi against the wall quite literally here in game number two. But Whiskey gets chopped up first. Where's the Spirit Link? He doesn't have the mana to put it down. Absurge is just out of mana. He barely gets enough to put it down to save the team. Peekaboo now has Vendetta rolling. He needs to kill Whoopi here and now. If Whoopi doesn't die in these next couple of seconds, Whiskey is going to be just torn to shreds. Can Peekaboo take down Whoopi? He's in line of sight of Whiskey. A critical mistake that could maybe cost his life. He's managed to roll back to the pillar. Now WizK on the back foot in void form trying to get a kill as he desperately oh. can't do it. WizK falls. Whoopi stays alive and for fun tie the series. Uh, this isn't completely over yet. Whoopi has no mana left. If Peekaboo can land. Kind of chasing down upstairs and mana rifting him. And you're going to have that added uh, uh, self-sustaining with that soul rending as well. Yeah, and ultimately too, being the monk on Tiger's Peak, you're going to have home field advantage, which we know can be very important. <laughs> All tied up, one in one. For fun versus the move, that changes right now.
All right, the move get denied on a sap early on. Instead, are going to be targeting the healer. Whoopi with Cheerios hexed up. Definitely good cross crowd control. WizK though unable to support Peekaboo. Cheerios denies any further damage from this initial attack, and Whoopi should start to stabilize. They grip Peekaboo off Whoopi, stun locking him. Absurd immediately responds, trading both Healing Tide and Earthen Wall to stabilize the team through that attack, effectively negating that swap entirely. Blind does pull the trinket from Whoopi, which is now an opening for Peekaboo to go after him. I'm curious to see when Peekaboo decides to pull the trigger on that. Maledix flying in this way of the crane. They need to respect Whoopi's uh, damage output potential here and just avoid it, wait for it to finish, maybe look for a psychic scream, some crowd control along those lines. Double leg sweep, Whoopi still leading the charge for the team, now setting up a swap to Peekaboo. Cheerio is looking for those mana rifts. He definitely needs to be landing those as frequently as possible to build and generate a mana advantage. Peekaboo still with all of those offensive cooldowns just juicy watering at the mouth ready to go and take down whoopee he's looking for any opportunity if whoopee moves into line of sight shadow step kidney shot is likely to be the follow-up peekaboo sees whoopee out of combat looks to try and sap him not able to get it unfortunately now goes for a swap instead yeah now full kidney shot on whoopee no, oh, but Rosita Jones there to back him up. Grips away Peekaboo, puts him into the Asphyxiate stun, and Whoopi's going to be completely fine. And looking at Whoopi's talents, he's actually not running the counteract magic. And I think a large p part of that is because Rosita Jones and Cheerios should, in theory, be able to keep themselves up through a lot of these Shadow Priest dots. And he realizes he might be the main target of choice, but Rosita Jones under a surprising amount of pressure. Smoke Bomb does get dropped out. Peekaboo with the Vendetta tried to get a lot of cooldowns from Rosita Jones. Managed to pull out the three minute Icebound Fortitude from Rosita. Jones, Whoopi, his life cocoon as well. WizK under fire, taking a lot of pressure. Absurge trying to keep him up. Whoopi with great ring of peace into a leg sweep on Absurge, denying a lot of those heals. WizK could still be in a little bit of trouble, throwing out Shadowmans on himself, trying to stabilize. Doesn't want to have to use the Disperse or the Void Shift just yet. And ultimately, he will be able to hold on to those. That was a really nice offensive play by Whoopi. The one reason you can't count for fun out is because of that player, Rosita Jones. He was a Titan Slayer in previous BlizzCons, taking out the form method Triforce roster thought to be undefeatable but he was able to dismantle their roster now going head to head with the tightness the move looking to eliminate them now from the competition in the second series of the day a lot on the line here for the move they need a stellar performance to get enough points to qualify to the spring finals the meta has not been in their favor everything is stacked against them and they still play against the odds yeah and one of the things that's funny is the fourth member on the move is actually Jelly Beans, and he was one of Rosita Jones's partner who did have such a deep run at that BlizzCon together. So that is interesting between these two teams. Full hex now onto Whoopi. Rosita Jones looking like he's going to be fine. Pressure here from the move, still onto Whoopi. Full kidney shot. He wasn't able to top himself off completely, but he did preemptively drop the Ring of Peace. Such high level plays from Whoopi, and there's just such a massive difference between Whoopi, the Mistweaver Monk, and Whoopi, the Restoration Druid. He's just constantly making these little out plays in the game and it's just fantastic to see. Yeah, most certainly is. I definitely do enjoy watching Whoopi on that Mistweaver Monk when I can get a chance. Rosita getting bursted down, makes a trade, but right before Vendetta, Peekaboo once again with an opportunity to take down Rosita. See how he decides to execute on it. Silence is shortly available for WizK. So Peekaboo and WizK have a lot of crowd control, and Peekaboo has a lot of damage because Vendetta is now available. They've got an opportunity to find a kill. They're gonna go after Whoopi with it. Kidney shot Vendetta, likely silence if WizK can get in position. He does manage to do so, but with reverse magic, that silence is removed by Cheerios. Good backup and teamwork on his part. Now Whoopi charges in to get a kill with Way of the Crane activated. Peekaboo respects that amount of damage, decides to use his Gladiator's Medallion to break lock out of the stun and evasion all the incoming attacks fully respecting the damage, but now opening himself up later on. Yeah, Whoopi's still under fire. Double Gladiator Maledict's gonna be flying in from the move. Darkness forced to be dropped out by Cheerios to keep Whoopi alive. Just has a few seconds left on that life cocoon, but he's still in some trouble. Oh. He gets silenced on his aura mastery. That Zen Focus T not getting any value from it. Peekaboo forced to be put into the stun by Rosita Jones. Not ideal in terms of offensive pressure, but they needed to keep Whoopi alive in that situation. Now Peekaboo still actually under a surprising amount of pressure. You can see WizK moving in, trying to find some crowd control, setting up Peekaboo with a life grip into a kidney shot. Good teamwork from the move. Whoopi should be able to survive with the revival. 
but he's still in a lot of trouble. Whoopi now transcendency out of line of sight, but Abstridge is on his heels. Peekaboo in hot pursuit to take down Whoopi in game number three here. Whoopi risks the dispel on those damage over time effects, soaking up a little bit of extra crowd control. Maybe an opening for Peekaboo. Peekaboo gets gripped away. Shadow steps to the death grip, immediately back on target, but Whoopi immediately used the life cocoon to absorb all of the hits, but he's still crowd control. They crush right through that shield. He's managed to make a getaway, though, with that leg sweep and survive behind the pillar. Mana slowly in favor of Abstridge. Cooldown certainly in favor now as well. The move are looking strong in game three, but you can't count for fun out. Yeah, Whoopi, they need to be looking for our drinks in this matchup, but Peekaboo just sitting on top of them is making it so difficult. There's really no vanish threat, so if he ever can escape, he doesn't have to worry about really getting sapped. But Peekaboo getting pressured away by Cheerios. Rosita Jones coming back as well, trying to pressure him away. There's no evasion, trinket, or anything for Peekaboo. Absurd is going to have to use a lot of mana to keep him alive. And I think this is uh -oh. Danger Town for Peekaboo. Void Shift traded out by WizK. And I don't think Peekaboo can afford to play this aggressive in the matchup at this point in the game with nothing left. He has to wait till uh, evasion is back up, but decides to pull the trigger on the vendetta with a full kidney shot on the way of the crane of Whoopi. And he has no trinket. Whoopi rolls away with the fortifying brew. He'll survive, but the move is the one that's under pressure. Yeah, Absturge is trying to deny that kill opportunity for, for fun with his ascendance. Now stabilizing the team. Wizkay moves in, pumps out a triple psychic scream. No real advantage, though, played off of that. Whoopi Shadow er, is able to transcend this away. Rosita's death grip is stalling out Peekaboo, but he's got that maneuverability honor talent, so his sprint cannot be suppressed as he wanted to chase down Whoopi. Whoopi denies the reconnect with that ring of peace. It's all about protect Whoopi. Don't let Peekaboo get anywhere near him for these couple of seconds. Now instead going after Rosita. Peekaboo is still quite far behind. Dampany is starting to ramp up. They can't afford to throw away this match and go to game five. Peekaboo makes the trade on that evasion. Will it be enough? They silence up Whoopi. They look to kill Rosita. He has cooldowns to trade. Icebound Fortitude overlapped with the anti-magic zone, and even still Rosita barely hangs on. Preemptive blind play there, a preemptive life cocoon on the blind, but now caught into a quaking palm. Whoopi still out of the fight for a couple more seconds. Rosita is still low on health if they can keep up the momentum. Still crowd controlling up Whoopi with every last second, every last millisecond of crowd control to take down Rosita, but ultimately the chain is broken. No, mind control at low health. Whiskey tries to stall it out just long enough for his silence now to be available. Rosita gets mind flay snared out of line of sight. Really top level play here by the move, but now Whoopi looks to counter engage. He activates away the cream, but walks right into Whiskey's trap. Double psychic scream. Rosita in trouble. Silence to deny the anti magic shield. Hex secured. Darkness is going to be enough. Darkness is barely enough to keep. Rosita alive, the move are on fire. Oh my goodness gracious, WizK had such an insane play there. He life gripped Peekaboo over. Whoopi chases him into a triple fear, setting up his team beautifully with these mind controls, with the life grips. The move is on fire in this matchup. Can they overcome all odds in this series? Full kidney shot now onto Rosita Jones. He's still low, not many cooldowns to work with. Whoopi saves his life with the life cocoon. Now Peekaboo is the one that's on the run, but he has Vendetta available. The move have the tools they need to close out the game. There's not a single defensive cooldown left for fun and this is looking like danger town yeah mana still equivalent here at 20 percent damage this is when the match was a close game last time let's see how much longer can absurd keep his team afloat he's got some defensive options but he's stun locked for one more second peekaboo on the run he's in desperation to stay alive trying to kite the entire team whiskey gets in the spearling totem with one final second left they pull the trigger on the vendetta it's do or die can they take rosita jones down two more seconds left on that anti magic shield now just available to start to stabilize but a hex is secured pressure on both fronts mind control Perfect timing on Whoopi. Rosita tries to pull back and get in line of sight to stabilize. Nice place. Peekaboo stuns Whoopi on that free casted heal, and they follow it up with void form damage. Another hex secured by Absturge. He's trying to squeak in a little bit of extra damage, and it's just enough to put the move back in the fight and move to match point. We are going to with the incapacitate. Omnivore drops the storm bolt. Rosita Jones all of a sudden is just igniting people with that combustion burst. It's very fun to watch as well, and they're super good. It's also the thing is, is when you look at this setup on the side of Four Fun, it fits every single individual player's play style perfectly. It is such a good composition for them, and that's why we do love to see it. But is it going to be enough for Four Fun to extend this to a game five, or is the move going to close out this series on Ashmane's fall? Oh, peekaboo. 
Yeah, tons of damage here from For Fun, and that is the surprise factor that they bring with this unique composition that they basically trademarked towards the end of AWC's series last year. This Fire Mage, this Mistweaver, this Arms Warrior, it's just totally peculiar to think that it actually works, but they've managed to synergize it quite effectively with their strategies. Whoopi now leading the charge as they switch targets to Wizk. He fades the incoming Sharpened Blade. Well done on Wizk's part, immuning that incoming damage and healing reduction. Wizk's defense has just been solid this entire series. The move battle against the meta, they ba battle against basically everything stacked against them, and they still manage to pull off victories. Potentially, this is their tournament for the comeback. They need to win one more game to stay alive in the lower bracket. Yeah, Omnivore still under a lot of pressure. Whoopi moving in, looking for some crowd control. They want to get aggressive on Peekaboo once again. WizK in the polymorph. Good cross crowd control by for fun, but that setup gets denied. Now a kidney shot on Rosita Jones. He could be in some trouble. Whoopi easily healing through it, though, not at any CC. Doesn't really have to deal with too much just yet. A lot of the crowd control that the move has available, it has cooldowns on it, Wizk's psychic scream, as well as his fear. So the move has to do these kind of hit and run strategies where every once in a while they get these massive crowd control chains. But outside of that, Whoopi should be able to heal through that damage. Once the CC is initiated though, definitely Four Fun could be in some trouble. Ooh, big meteor hit here for Four Fun. Void Shift is going to be switching the health from Peekaboo to Wizk in the nick of time to save the move. Once again, Wizk's defense looking impenetrable. Whoopi now getting swapped to by Peekaboo as they try to set up for a kill after him. He's going to deny the kill with Life Cocoon on Omnivore. Both targets start to stabilize. Omnivore Rosita Jones are ready to roll. Let's see if Peekaboo can manage to escape to safety. Ring of Peace bouncing him back into the team. Rosita out of line of sight to secure crowd control. Instant mass dispel. Perfect timing, but they get the follow-up. Do they have any more crowd control? Good storm bolt. Nice combo. Peekaboo dipping dangerously low. Spearling Totem has now been forced out and Four fun are out for vengeance here in game four. Yeah, Peekaboo's been in so much trouble during this game. He still has a lot of defensives, though. He has his Trinket, Evasion, Cloak of Shadows. The move opting to use the other defense much earlier on in this matchup. Potentially, it could rotate back up. That might be their strategy. Whoopi's mana not doing great, already on 40%. But Absurge also not doing too well. Peekaboo looking for pressure on a Rosita Jones as he is in a Hex. Omnivore also taking a little bit of damage. Whoopi rolling away, uses his transcendence and actually sitting down for a drink. The move is trying to find some pressure here, but Whoopi basically completely resetting his mana. This is such a nightmare for the move. Basically hopeless in this situation. Pressured. Whoopi full mana now. Peekaboo under a lot of in a lot of trouble. Yeah, but he still has his personal defensive cooldowns to make some trades, so the move can definitely stay in this game and just close it out here and now. For fun, need to be laser focused for the rest of the fight. They need to make sure that they remove Wizk from every engagement so he does not get these mass dispels. We see a polymorph on Absturge. Where's the mass dispel? It's being channeled. Gets counterspelled. Good cross crowd control by For Fun. This is the type of execution that I want to see from them a little bit more consistently. That nets them Peekaboo's personal defensive cooldowns. That was the main objective on that push. Now they need to focus on surviving because the move are striking back. They're just fully going to respect the damage from the move. Trade an ice block during that blind sap crowd control, but even still, Omnivore now being pressured. Whoopi has to heal two targets that are low on health. Looks like he gets silenced. They keep up the damage. Rosita taking the brunt of this exchange. Maledict absorbs a bit of healing. Dispelled off. Another Maledict flies in and they go for the smoke bomb kill. Trying to crush Rosita Jones through that life cocoon. Ring of Peace might deny Peekaboo's reconnect. Rosita blinks back out of line of sight. Stays alive. Omnivore still exposed and rotting down. The move need to race for a kill. Peekaboo doesn't have much to stay alive. If they can't kill Omnivore here and now, Peekaboo will be in trouble. They kill off the war banner just in time, but Omnivore secures a double intimidating shout. He's able to stay in it, although they got his Gladiator safeguard. Omnivore is completely exposed. Cauterize is only available for Rosita Jones. Any crowd control on Whoopi and the move are gonna close. Yeah, and Cauterize isn't that great of a defensive, especially with the Gladiator's Maledic Trinket in the game. If the move can press that on Rosita Jones before Cauterize procs, that entire Cauterize heal can get absorbed, so that's why Rosita Jones earlier on, he just traded out his Ice Block, didn't want to wait till Cauterize proc. He had the Maledic on him, he could have just gone down now a big set up on a peekaboo he trinkets out uses faint Whoa. that should keep him alive but now peekaboo very vulnerable no evasion no cloak of shadows no trinket the move looking to get aggressive on omnivore silence now secured on whoopee omnivore with no defensives has to get the life cocoon from whoopee but whoopee's almost completely out of mana we've just entered dampening whoopee completely reset his mana earlier on in the game but these consistent way of the cranes have definitely cost them sid abster
Spirit just needs 10 more seconds to get that Trinket Spirit Link Totem. A really powerful defensive cooldown combo for a Restoration Shaman. More than likely to save the day, but he's three seconds away. Two seconds away. One second away. Once again, with one second left, Abstridge connects that Spirit Link, saves the team. Whoopi tries to sneak away. He's getting his mana back. He's keeping his team in the fight. He's now got a lead over Abstridge, but he needs to recover. His team is still low on health. Whiskey pushes up. He's got Silence available. They go for a blind. He's looking to try and fish for a sap. Peekaboo out of line of sight, gets the re-stealth, gets the sap, perfect crowd control Beautiful. from the move. Nice execution, Rosita on the run, but he's not able to move that Garou, just holding him in place. Whoopi's so low, how is he gonna be able to keep him going? Cauterize triggers, Rosita on the run. Whiskey moves in to try and finish the job, but it is not enough damage to close it out. Peekaboo's got pressure in two points with Omnivore low as well. Die by the Sword is just now available for him to make a trade as both teams battle it out to the bitter end. Yeah, Rosita Jones with that fire blood, that dark Iron Dwarf racial. He kept himself alive in that moment right before Cauterize, removing that Maledict, and that's why he survived. Now Peekaboo getting low, uses the evasion, trying to just stay alive during that storm bolt. Now full polymorph or half polymorph onto Absurge. Whoopi sneaking away once again, looking for a drink. Rosita Jones in midfield, trying to deny Absurge with the Frost Nova. Whoopi unfortunately not able to find the mana. And now he's left Omnivore all alone. He has to die by the sword, but this is danger time. There we go, Quaking Palm into fear, onto Whoopi, Omnivore getting lower, Dive of the Sword has to be traded out, but that's all he has available. Oh. Spell reflecting some of the Absurge's damage, nicely done. Whoopi with basically no mana left in desperation mode. Silence, the CC isn't over, the move wants to close out this game. Perfect execution by the move, locking Whoopi up. Mind control at very low health, trying to deny the life cocoon, but Whoopi doesn't fall for that trap. Now securing that absorb. Mind control now shifted over to Whoopi instead. He gets polymorphed on it. Rosita doing what he can to pause out the fight a tad bit longer. If they can scrape together a manatee for a way of the crane, maybe Whoopi can add enough damage to take Peekaboo down. They need to eliminate Wizcape from the fight. He has void shift available to save Peekaboo. If they can crowd control that cooldown out and burst down Peekaboo, they can still stay alive in the lower bracket, but they're running out of time it's quickly sinking rosita jones caught in the stun lock omnivore trying to break up the crowd control with the war banner pausing the chain allowing whoopi to slowly recover but really with what mana can he do so earth grab on his chi torpedo whoopi can't move in he's locked out but maybe they don't need it there's the void shift whiz k saves the day peekaboo keeps marching in to try and close this out but rosita now has an ice block in his back pocket whiz k is still low on health absters doesn't have a lot of mana to recover that rosita now gets smoke bombed ice block immediately traded out respecting that damage realizing whoopi he doesn't have mana to heal it. He needs to stop damage before it happens. Frost Nova on Peekaboo. Rosita needs to avoid Peekaboo at all costs. Any damage is going to stick probably for the rest of the match. Maledix now soaking up more healing. Life Cocoon gets traded. Whiskey in trouble as they make a swap. He disperses to deny the kill. Absurge once again, 10 seconds away from that Spirit Link Totem. Is he going to get it this time? Yeah, Whoopi into a full blind, no follow-up. Actually, a full hex secured by Absurge, nicely done. Rosita Jones could be in some trouble. Temporal Shield does get used. Silenced by WizK. Whoopi has to hold on a little bit longer. Rosita Jones doing everything he can to survive. A meteor setup here on the Peekaboo, but easily shrugged off with that faint. Rosita Jones with no cauterize, with no ice walk, with no fire blood. He's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Whoopi trying desperately to get away for a drink, but he doesn't have the life cocoon to rely on. He has to keep Rosita Jones topped off in this kidney shot. Quaking Palm by Wiz K using that Pandaren racial. Double fear comes in. Rosita Jones all by himself. Dragon's Breath trying to keep himself alive, but ultimately the move, they will close out this series. Excellently done. And you want to feed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.